I have a really nice one here, and, and I have to tell you, I got this out of Wikipedia because I was, wasn't was motivated enough to figure out one myself. And uh, anyway, it's to solve x cubed minus 2x plus 2 equals 0 by Newton's method. It actually is possible to solve this directly. Um, it's pretty complicated to solve a third degree polynomial algebraically. It's a, it, it's a mess. I've done it. and um, But uh, let's use Newton's method. And... So, again, I want to set the, the function is already set equal to zero, so f of x is x cubed minus 2x plus 2. The derivative is 3x squared minus 2. And so my x nu, x nu would be the old x minus the function x cubed minus 2x plus 2 divided by my derivative, 3x squared minus 2. All right, now, um, I think <laughs> you probably would get the right answer if you just picked the number, but um, here's what they show. This is, um, oh, oh, that's uh, n, sorry, n and x in. Okay, it turns out if you started with, with 0, as your first term, then okay. If if your first guess is zero, plug zero into here. You'll get zero minus those are zeros minus two over zero minus two negative two. Well, those two negatives cancel. I get zero plus one. I get one. And so if you plug in zero, you get one. All right now, when you plug in one. Look what happens. If I plug in 1, it's 1 minus, so on top I've got 1 minus 2 plus 2 over 3 minus 2, and that's 1 minus 1 over 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. I get 0. And so we're just going to start going back and forth here. It's just going to alternate, because now if I plug in 0 again, I'm going to get 1. Plug in 1 again, I'll get 0, and it'll just keep on going. So it's never going to converge. Never going to converge. Uh, if you're motivated, go, go on Wikipedia, look up Newton's method, and they they have a nice graph of this. So you can see why that's happening. You put the graph; it's, it's quite interesting. Anyway, um, so it's possible to get into some kind of infinite loop where you just keep going back and forth. This happens to be called a two cycle because um, it, it continually repeats. Re uh, repeats two numbers. That's a two cycle. It's possible to get a three cycle where you get three numbers that keep repeating or four numbers that keep repeating, a four cycle. So uh, apparently there's no limit to those. And uh, so now that, that that's unusual. That is unusual. And um, the thing in this case, the way around it is just to pick a different starting number. So what if we did that? Let's see if we can get the answer. So if I plug in Oh, 0.5. Let's call it 0.5. If I plug in 0.5, and I'm going to go to the calculator because calculator is fast. Uh, not a lot of glory doing all that arithmetic by hand, which is what I had to do when I studied calculus. All right, so I have to, uh, let me see, 0.5, store x, and then I've got um, x minus left parentheses x cubed minus 2x plus 2, close parentheses, divided by left parentheses, 3x squared minus 2. Make sure I got all that right. Uh, let's see. Does that look right to you? Oh, I forgot to hit, thank you, I forgot to hit store x. All right, store x. All right, so I get 1.4. Oh, how about that? And then when I do it again, I get 0.8988. Eight nine eight nine nine eight nine uh, six nine zero oh, seven uh, two one six five, and then do it again. I get negative one point two eight eight seven seven nine three two seven six seven. Ooh, is this going to converge? That's kind of way off there. Ah, minus two point. 105767299901 and uh, oh, 
minus 1.829199950. Well, this thing's really making me a liar, isn't it? Um, I just keep doing it a number of times, and it looks like it's going to converge pretty quickly after that. All right, so it is converging. So, and I, and I lost track of how many places, but it finally gets down to minus 1.769. 1.769292, uh, 354, 24. So it was about eighth or ninth step where it, uh, it, it finally converged. So, <laughs> okay, kind of a, to me, for a third degree polynomial, that's, that was a, kind of a weird, uh, weird result. But anyway, so um, things can be a little bit unpredictable with Newton's method. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up with a with another segment here. So, what could go wrong with Newton's method? And I, I'm not sure you would say it really goes wrong, but um, it in in a weird case, if you happen to accidentally pick a starting point that was at the bottom of a graph or top of a graph called the relative minimum, relative maximum. Or if you pick the point that led you to that one of those exact points, then this derivative is going to be zero because it's a horizontal tangent line. The horizontal tangent line is not going to cross the x-axis. In Newton's method, you're dividing by the derivative; you'd be dividing by zero. So it's just going to, you know, you get error messages on a calculator, or you get division by zero if you're if you're really looking at it. So um, those are some some weird instances where where something will go wrong and, and you get, say, an error message because it's trying to divide by zero. All right, so uh, in that case, uh, try a different starting point see if that fixes it, okay? Um, this kind of function here, it, it comes down and it has a horizontal asymptote. So in other words, it, it never quite touches, in this case, never quite touches the x-axis. See, this could be y equal to 1 over x. And, um, but when you start picking numbers, the tangent lines are just going to get you closer and closer and closer to infinity. And so attempting to set that equal to zero and solve it, uh, Newton's method is going to take you out to infinity. Well, look at this. This particular equation has no answer anyway, because one divided by a number is not zero. <laughs> okay? You can't solve it. So, in this case, it's obvious why you can't get an answer, and the Newton's method, it would just go to infinity. And, uh, and there's some other examples of that where it will shoot off to infinity um, if you stray too far from where there might be an answer. So, this is a, a more complicated function than this one. Um, for example, suppose it went up like this and came down. All right, well, it does have an answer. So if I started over here with my guess, I'm going to be able to figure out where the root is. <laughs> if I start over here with a guess, it's going to shoot off to infinity. So uh, in this case, on one side, I'll get an answer. On the other side, I don't think I'm going to get an answer. So um, anyway, there's, there's variations of this that are interesting. Finally, I, I don't think I mentioned this, but if I did, I apologize. There's uh, a simpler, mathematically simpler way of solving an equation is called the bisection method. And the bisection method involves taking two guesses and then, for example, if one guess is positive and one's negative, then you take the average. And if that's negative, this is positive, you take that average and you keep doing that. <laughs> okay? If, uh, for example, uh, if your two guesses are both positives, you're going to have to go somewhere else to get a negative answer. <laughs> and so as long as you can stay on both sides of the y-axis where one guess is positive and one is negative, then you can start averaging your way, averaging your way toward an answer. It's called a bisection method and it it's, can be somewhat slow. Uh, it does not require calculus, but it's kind of slow. That has a rate of convergence called linear, first degree. Newton's method has a rate of convergence called uh, quadratic second degree. And uh, what does all that mean? Well, the Davidson-Carver method has a rate of convergence called cubic. 
and so I'm going to record a Davidson Carver video. Now if you're in my class, I want you to watch it because I like for you to see this. Um, if you're not in my class, you're just looking at these videos, uh, look at the Davidson Carver method. It's, um, it's a higher order quote unquote improvement on Newton's method. Uh, the bad news about it, it's not very, it's not very practical to use because it's it gets complicated. You have to solve quadratic equations. But um, I want to show you that uh, that that video. And so uh, for self interest, if you're not one of my students, you should watch it. And uh, but I doubt any class out there is going to require the Davidson Carver method other than mine. And uh, so that's an upcoming video. And then I think I'll uh, take time out in another interesting video and show you a. Uh, application of this in complex numbers producing fractal pictures. So this is stuff I love to do in my classes to show them, but add them into this video series uh, to make it interesting. So um, we'll take it from there.